So good morning and welcome to day 22 of the 90-day uh, Breakthrough Challenge. My name is Dr. C.K. Mogire. And today our goal is to talk about vision, but we are going to make it very practical by looking at people's vision and coaching people through. While somebody else is being coached, any question or exchange or dialogue, conversation that goes on between myself and the person, or if I have more than two people, put yourself in their shoes. Any question that is in the air, hear it and think about it. Try as much as possible during the entire much of the, se the, the session to have a pen and paper ready. If you hear a question that somebody else struggles with, you need to ask yourself that question because if they are on the hot seat and you are asked the same question, would you have ready answers? Because these questions affect all of us. So if you hear a question, to, to a large extent, anytime we bring somebody on into the hot seat, any questions they are asked, have your own answers to that question. You will also, in a way, already be in the hot seat reflecting through that. And so what you're seeing here are the daily intentionality commitments. And this is a critical pillar in uh, my next book, whose title and revelation you will see in a couple of days. It contains chapters that end with very targeted reflections. So the reflection segment is separate. And the commitment section is separate. What you are seeing comes from the commitment section. Every single time you sent a goal, the first step to find out is at what level are you setting the goal? Are you setting the goal at the point, the level of trying to alter your identity or to adjust your beliefs or to release more of your capacity or to control your behavior or to change the environment or are you setting the highest level of goal to connect with meaning and purpose and why and those are six different levels at which you can set your goal so that's the first question you have to answer the commit to awareness in terms of awareness where at what level am i setting this goal this vision i'm pursuing at what level is this vision operating do I have a vision about the kind of capacity I want to release? Do I have a vision about the kind of behavior I want to manifest? Do I have a vision about the kind of person I want to, come, to become, which is at the level of identity? Or do I have a vision about the kind of meaning or purpose or impact or legacy I want to leave behind? And those are all the six levels. Awareness, that's the first step. Secondly, is there something that I need to learn? What do I already know that makes it possible for me to fulfill this vision? Sometimes we set visions that for which we don't have the knowledge, but we do not have create a plan to acquire the knowledge to make it possible for us to achieve the vision. And so your com second commitment level comes to learning. What kind of learning is it going to take? Is it learning a skill or acquiring knowledge or learning a new attitude or a new way of showing up or learning a new way of being, learning a new level of energy, how to activate a new level of energy or learning how to deal with fear, learning how to accept and deal with rejection. The next level is committing to change. Wherever you are, when you have a vision that is grand enough, there is a gap between where you are and what that vision is. What change, what amount or quality or quantity of change is it going to require for you to go from where you are to the vision that you're trying to get to? And if you do not have specific com commitments with regard to how you will change, because if nothing is going to change in your life, it means you will continue to manifest what you have already, mani already always been manifesting. But if you're going to move to the vision which is farther ahead than you are, higher above than you are, deeper than you are, then you have to change to be able to fit into that environment. The next commitment, number four, is commitment to action. What specific actions are you going to take to get there? And this has to be broken down to specific actions. It is not... 
I am going to acquire customers. No, it's not I'm going to, to increase sales. No, what specifically are you going to do? And we will reiterate this at some point, but the next one is resilience. Every single time you set out to achieve an important goal or to pursue a vision, if you don't face obstacles, you are coasting. If you are in water and you don't have to paddle, you are either dead and therefore you're being swept down or you're just coasting and the water is just carrying you. You are not going anywhere meaningful. It's only fish that are dead that don't have to paddle because the water just carries them. You are going to face res resistance. You're going to face obstacles. The obstacles serve to make you stronger. They develop your resilience. Are you committing to resilience? In other words, you are committing to the kind of person you will become as a result of facing the obstacles, which means the bigger the obstacle, the bigger the obstacle, the greater the resilience you're going to develop after you overcome it. So that when you set a goal, and the goal means something to you, it's valuable enough for you to pursue it. When you meet an obstacle, it's not an obstacle, it's an opportunity. Because it is going to squeeze out of you all the juice and honey. It's going to develop the most valuable quality, resilience in you. How are you committing to your resilience? By identifying the specific obstacles that you're going to face the obstacles that you will face and therefore what you will do about those obstacles. The next commitment is commitment to reflection. This is one of the biggest gaps that in, especially in the education journey of most people, people go through an entire education journey from all the way from primary school, high school, university, uh, masters, PhD, but they have never reflected one day. They have answered questions, they have answered exams, but they have never reflected. In other words, the experiences they have have never become insight because reflection is what transforms your experience into insight. How are you becoming better? How are you becoming more insightful as a result of, of developing awareness, finding resources to learn from, changing so that you begin to see yourself in a new light? So that you can tell that you have actually changed and how you've changed because you chose the change. It didn't happen accidentally. If you wait for the environment to change, you, it's going to be painful. You change intentionally because you know where you are going. It, the reflection is what allows you to see all this, these ingredients. When you reflect, you are able to figure out how, how, what is my attitude now compared to when I started? What is my knowledge now compared to when I started? How am I different, in other words, changed compared to when I, I started? Which of my actions are more effective now compared to when I started? All these things come to you as a result of effectively reflecting. Reflecting on how more resilient am I now? How more comfortable am I with obstacles than before I started? And then, of course, finally, accountability. It's... If I would give our coaching group a grade on accountability, I think we are probably doing a very strong D plus right now. Very, very strong D plus, which is, which is an improvement. We can't have 40 people in a group that have actually paid for breakthrough, but like David, they don't show up to the field consistently to fight. It's And I, I do not know how to portray this as probably the single most important thing you will do this year. The single most important thing you will do this year. To show up in an environment that requires you to reflect every single day about what is going on internally. So that, like I said, you don't continue showing up with Madara. You start showing up with your A-game. I don't know how else to emphasize it, but we'll leave it at that. Accountability. Accountability through connecting with a mentor or a coach or a peer who is headed in the same journey. 
accountability is where you need people with common values, not common interests, common values, so that if you agree that you and I will be doing our daily reset, you do your daily reset without fail. Common interests, common destiny, not common history. If you have this common history and common destiny, then that is good. If you have common interests and common values, then that's good. But what takes precedence is common values and common destiny. So this, I would like you to keep this in mind. And now we will proceed with getting some people on the hot seat. I'm going to ask those of you who are not in video, do you, what's the reason? Uh, Isabel, uh, Pauline, Grace, Mary, Hesed, Dawn, Jane, Florence. Florence you, has an issue with, uh, with uh, power. I already knew that. Uh, Sh Shiro, I thought I saw Shiro on video at some point. Anyway, let's uh, let's get our first person to go on uh, on the hot seat. My sister is on video. I have, I'm going to start with Rispa. Rispa, let's go. This will be the very, very, very first time for me to coach Rispa. Hi, Rispa. You look familiar. Hello. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. We spoke yesterday, but it's a new day, so I have to figure it out. <laughs> as long as Luxon is still asleep, okay? Yeah, he's okay, asleep. Cool. cool. Yeah, so we I have not asked you any question about what you're trying to achieve this year. What What's the vision this year for you? Yeah, my vision this year is uh, in uh, three years' time, I see myself living within the purpose that I was created for. And I'm also planning to, <laughs> to, to change my career path. Okay. Yes. It's, you're making this very difficult because I already know some, <laughs> some of that. <laughs> but why? Because uh, I have realized that the current career path I have, I still have a different, I am attached to a different career path. Okay. My interests are still in a different career path, yeah. So three years from today, you have succeeded. What does it look like? It's, I know it's not going to be a, a smooth journey it's going to be really rough and tough and um uh, for the career path it won't be exactly 3 years it might be more okay it's uh, let's let's say it's 15 years from today yes and it was rough and tough but we are past the rough and tough now we have the final product right it the, it is right. now looking exactly as you wanted it to look like what what do you see so I see myself in a, in a career that fits my interest, a career that I'm enjoying to do. Okay. The environment, yes. At the end of the day, when you have had an amazing day but during, during this career, what do you feel? I feel happy. Mm -hmm. I feel satisfied. What does that mean? you feel satisfied but what that does, does that mean in other words what if you did not feel that and you felt something else you were anxious but now you're feeling this one why is this what you prefer not feeling anxious fulfill for fulfillment why why is fulfillment important to you because that is the purpose i was created for why is fulfillment important to Rispa Mogiri?
yeah so That's part of yes you so you you've already we've gone through I, w I will share this model with everyone so that everybody knows uh uh knows it we we have you have gone through already gone through the first four layers you went from environment to behavior to capacity and it, when you are speaking about career being in the right career that is a question of capacity it's a question of releasing yourself your skills from one area to another okay so you went from environment to behavior to capacity okay then we went, we came to beliefs and anytime you use the word be because it's most of the time it's it's pointing towards belief okay so right now the where you are seated it is in between belief and identity in terms of what is it going to require so at the end of the day you feel happy right we've ticked environment we've ticked behavior we've ticked capacity but now we need to figure out in here where is your source of power? At what level is your source of power? Your source of power is not at the level of the environment. It's never at the level of the environment. It's never at the level of behavior. It's never at the level of capacity. Sometimes it's at the level of belief. But when we, when we are powered at the level of belief, we become susceptible because then that means, because beliefs are of two types. Beliefs are limits and, perm and permissions. A belief can be a limitation or it can be a permission. So all the limiting limiting beliefs you have, they are beliefs and the permissions. But so as I talk to you, you have already, so you have exhausted everything that your mind is going to respond to. So from this point, and if it, you feel like it's something you need to go think about and, and reflect on to see what, what clarity you get, that would be fine. So you need now to find the answer either the level of identity or deeper than that. It is it is 150 years from today, and people are telling a story of uh, uh, a daughter of Mugira who lived in uh, in Mombasa for 40 years and left an impact. What will what would people say that if you had if you would you that would make the most that would be most valuable to you? What are the one or two things that you would want people to say 150 years when you are long gone? <clears throat> that I am part of the change or uh, I'm part of the people. Mm -hmm. Or let me talk about my life. My life has an a positive impact on the society or in the society. Why is that important to you? After being awareness of my identity, I'll be happy and fulfilled to see a generation copying or talking about my life or the impact I had in their yeah. life. Yes. Yeah. It's you you you're doing amazing. I'm going to allow you to get off the uh, hot seat and this is going to be something for you to think through. And this is this is uh, a question I grappled with for a long time. And uh you you you've seen my life the entire time from 2010 when I was working in Kikuyu when you guys went to Kakamega and you know at what point my direction changed very, very suddenly. And that's because at that point, I answered that question. And uh, I would like you to answer that question in the context of this group, rather than me trying to work with you directly so that then you find other people in here that will that will help you and you can work with as, as peers, right? Okay. Well, thank you. I will get you off the hot seat and get someone else. Could we... Give a round of applause to Rispa Mojire. <laughs> I've been called Mojire today <laughs> almost 10 times. <laughs> right. Thank you so much. I'm going to get uh, Eunice Muturi, if you are on. Yes, Eunice. Good morning. 
Hey, Eunice. Good morning. I am going to pin you up. All right. So let's speak with you, Eunice. How are you doing today? I'm well. What is the single uh, most uh, insightful thing you've picked in the Breakthrough Challenge since you started? Intentionality. Uh -huh. It's a term that I didn't, I didn't know, but then as we go along, yeah. Uh, in my simple understanding is that intentionality is what I decide to do and stick with it. Yeah. And I every day I think about it and I and as we go along with the challenge, I'm surprised that what I need for me to change and to move to the next level is just something within me. Because I can decide, I have the ability to decide and stick with my decision. Yeah, it's what's something is happening to your phone. Are you? Uh, it's producing maybe some maybe scratch, scratching try. sound. Or maybe let me try to be a bit more still. Is yes. it better now? Yes, it's better. It was scratching. Okay. You say, you've said something extremely important, and it's uh, it's, it's some. Please write this down and write what uh, Eunice has said, and actually think about it. That everything you need is within you, and write it in first person because that is the truth. One of one of the ingredients we ignore is that all the positive emotions you're trying to achieve or experience, you already have experienced them, except some of them you experience them subconsciously or distracted or superficially. You have laughed, you have been grateful, you have been confident, you've been courageous, you've been bold, you've experienced all these things. If I asked you what fear feels like, you know exactly what fear feels like. But if I ask you what courage feels like, your body doesn't produce it automatically. So you have those experiences. The question is, how can we magnify them? The body automatically magnifies fear. It's If you have a presentation coming up, your heart rate just automatically goes to the 90s, to the hundreds all by itself. So I, that's, I, I want to make sure that we don't miss that. Ev everything I need is within me. Everything I need is within me. And that connects, allow me to just say one or two things about the last topic that I shared as an audio. Everything I need is within me, right? I don't know how to say this without creating confusion. Let's finish, then I will come back to this question of the comfort zone. But everything I need is within me. It's, I am like, a, I'm like a mound of a flour, which already has yeast, right? It's flour mixed with yeast, right? And I am in a cup. I'm a whole cup full of flour, right? If I mix water with this flour that already has yeast. Just mix it with water and let it sit there. What is going to happen to the flour? It's going to expand and it's going to overflow. I don't need to move the cup. I don't. I don't need to move the cup. The flour will expand and overflow. The flower will go from being contained within a cup to continuing being contained within a cup, but going beyond the cup, such that the cup never leaves. The cup is still there. When you boil milk, it's the same milk. It is the same milk. What's the difference? You raise the energy of the milk to the point where the milk overflows. And that's because you changed the energy of the milk. Your comfort zone is not a problem. In fact, if you didn't have your comfort zone, you would be crazy. The question is, are you doing everything you can within your comfort zone? Uh, could I please uh, promote one of you? I can't find James. I'm going to promote the next person I can find. Who may anybody that may be able to Domintira, could you uh, be our co-admin today, please? Co-host. And if anybody unmutes and if we hear any background noise, please mute whoever it is. I've made you a co-host. Your your comfort zone. Without your comfort zone, you would be crazy. 
your, your comfort zone is where you grow your roots. The problem is not your comfort zone. The problem is that you have live in a comfort zone. You live in a small comfort zone, but you also act small. How do you act small? You are not doing everything you can within your comfort zone. Have you ever bought any books that you could read, but you haven't read and they're hanging on your shelf? Are you waking up and utilizing all the time that you could wake up and utilize? Are you utilizing your transitions? If you had a call or you went to the gym, from the gym, you come back home. The problem is that you, in, from one important activity to another, you pass through distractions. You're on a meeting or you're speaking with a client. Instead of going from speaking with a client to writing down, planning, you go through social media, maybe WhatsApp. You, you use your transition time for distractions, which breaks your energy of concentration. So you go from concentration to distraction, concentration to distraction, concentration to distraction, such that you have been working, quote unquote, working for four hours, but 90 minutes of those four hours has been, have been used in distractions. And that's because you typed three paragraphs of the report and then you looked at Facebook. And every single time you get distracted, you lose up to 15 minutes before you can fully engage back in what you are doing. So the problem is not your, your comfort zone. The problem is that you are you are in a small comfort zone, but you are also acting small within the, the comfort zone. Are you moving consistently? Are you exercising as much as you can? Are you eating as healthy as you can? Are you getting enough sleep? In other words, sleeping on time, not finding yourself on social media, on WhatsApp at 2 a.m., 3 a.m., 4 a.m. in the morning, and then ending up waking up late. You, you, you need... if. If you can take full advantage of everything that is in your comfort zone, you are like that flower. You will automatically overflow such that the comfort zone does not limit you. It allows you stability. It allows you predictability. The single most powerful need that we all have is the need for certainty, which is the foundational need. If one of you or any of you today here, if you woke up this morning and you found that your house has moved to, to uh, South Nigeria, it is now in Port Harcourt, you wake up and everybody around you is speaking uh, Igbo, <laughs> you would scream. <laughs> if you wake up in the morning, right? You wake up in the morning, you go to your living room and then you find two hyenas and one elephant and one crocodile seated there, it's, you would scream. You without that stability, you would never be able to grow. A tree grows because it's planted somewhere. It has roots in the soil. In other words, it has stability. When the wind blows, the roots it has established allow it to, to, to tolerate the wind. The problem is not my comfort zone. The problem is that I am acting small within my comfort zone. If I start to make use of everything within my comfort zone, I will automatically overflow and create a new comfort zone. The goal is to expand and create a comfort zone that contains more. And that happens after my flower and your flower expands and fills the cup. It has to fill the cup first. You have to fill. You have to be effective to the most you can within the comfort zone you are in. And then you will automatically overflow and include more more experiences. The milk goes from the sufuria to, to the gas to the floor. <laughs> it's, it includes more things just because it is expanding, but it expands to over, out, overflow from its initial containment because the energy, it has to expand enough to fill that space it's in first. So your challenge is to feel, to feel that space. Feel the space you are in. And then from there, you will overflow. So I wanted to see whether you had anything else, uh, Eunice, anything else that you have picked from uh, the breakthrough challenge from the beginning. I think you're muted. Oh, sorry. That's okay. Uh, I'm, saying, I'm curious also to find out more about uh, reflection. It's a new concept. I found it here. 
I realize that many times I say I will journal, you know, this practice of journaling, but somehow I could never come around to doing it. But I'm thinking it's it's a high time I started journaling because with journaling, it allows me to reflect. But I it's a concept that I think I need to understand and move it to the next level so that I can get the most out of it. That, that's uh, that's uh, that's really really important that you mentioned the two so the difference between reflection and journaling is that you can reflect about an upcoming experience you can reflect about an upcoming meeting you sit down and you ask i am about to speak with this client what might be important about this client what am i feeling about this client what am i feeling about the conversation i'm about to have do i have any fears in other words, it's journaling is about documenting what has happened. Reflection is about raising your awareness, whether it's about things that are happening, things that have happened, things that are going to happen. The reason why you don't journal is because you have restrained journaling to the end of the day when things have already happened. Reflection is something you can carry with you when you are seated. When you arrive in the office, you can reflect immediately. What am I feeling? What do I remember from yesterday? What am I concerned about for the rest of this day? What am I committed to achieving? It's, it is, reflection is about, reflection is literally the, what it means. It's, it's like you standing in front of a mirror and seeing your reflection in the mirror. While journaling is literally just documenting what happened yesterday. Journalists tell us the news from yesterday. They don't tell us what is going to happen tomorrow. Otherwise, we will call them thought leaders. <laughs> so you reflecting means you, you don't leave your reflection booklet at home. You carry it with you. And you can reflect anytime. Sometimes instead of going on to social media, especially after you've had a meeting or you're about to go into an important meeting or something important has happened, you can reflect about it. What do I think about what has happened? So that you, your thoughts, you you don't just contain them in your head, you express them out and it raises your awareness. I hope that difference is clear, that journalists tell us what happened yesterday, right? The mirror shows you what is happening right now. When you go to the mirror, you see what is currently going on and that is the goal, to raise self-awareness. So let's now speak about where you are going. So what is your vision for 2024? Okay, <laughs> that's a tough question. Now, I have been in an interesting space. Left uh, formal employment many years ago, but somehow never quite found my footing. Uh, and I feel like uh, I can't go on like this. And I think yeah. that's the reason why mm -hmm. when someone sent me a link to join this group, the previous one. And I just listened to the first audio where you are saying about I'm doing a great work and I can't come down. That is the first thing I ever had. I had never had anything like that before. Something, an awareness, I mean, a curiosity was created within me. And I said, maybe this is the opportunity or this is the vehicle yeah. that I can use to be able to change. Uh, I, for the last 12 years, I've tried many things, but with no clarity. And I have found myself just going around in circles. So my vision for 2024, first and foremost, currently I am um, I'm in network marketing. Yeah. Is I think I have specific goals of what I would want to achieve in that space right now. One of them is that I've been in that space, but with nothing to show for it. So my goal this year is make real progress that I can tell people about, that I can show, that I have. <laughs> if at all, if it's going to just be helping people, let me help people and have something in my pocket. I don't know whether I'm clear. <laughs> You're absolutely, absolutely clear. I want to, I want to start off with uh, finding my footing. Yes. What does that mean to you? What, what, so give me I have heard the words, right? What did it mean to you to not find your footing? And I'm, I'm, I'm highlighting that to bring awareness to those words because 
those those are the words the tongue says the brain has an image of what that feels and your body has an emotion associated with that so that when you say those words it's not just the words it is the image that is associated with them and the emotion that is associated so perhaps i should ask what did it feel like to not find your footing okay what i mean by my footing what is it that i can tell people that i do and that puts a shilling in my pocket yeah yeah in very simple that is what i mean by footing so let let, let, I... let me take you a different direction um i'm just trying to guide the direction the conversation so that we get the most out of it T tell me the you said you've tried several things can you tell me the things that you you you've tried in the last 12 years just go quickly one i tried to run a cyber cafe two i've tried to sell clothes and shoes three i've tried a restaurant four i have tried cleaning business five i have gone back to work three times six and now I am in network marketing. Okay. So this you tried these things. Which of these things did you do? I've heard about the ones you tried. Which one did you do? Okay. <laughs> All right. Maybe none. Because I didn't do them for long enough. Which of these things did you go into with no uh, plan B? Did, did you do any of these things concurrently? No, at different times. At different times, okay. In the last 12 years, what were you trying to achieve? When I left formal employment, I thought it is time that I could run my own business and do something for myself. Okay. But either I was not ready or not properly guided. What were you trying to achieve by... But I'm, I'm, I'm trying to figure out what the driving force was. What were you trying to achieve? Okay, do I understand that? What I was trying to achieve is be able to be able to do something for myself that is outside formal employment. Yes. Okay. So you formal. We know formal employment is out. You are out here. You are active over these twelve years. You're trying different things, right? All these different things, you try different things because the goal does not depend on the goal is the end point is the same. The pathway can be different. So you try different pathways. What were you trying? What was the goal? What would have made your life successful if it had happened in the last 12 years? For instance, maybe the first thing I ever tried, if it took off the ground and it was successful mm -hmm. and I was able to push myself in that space. I would have considered myself to have made it. Why would that mean? Why why would that be success? Because I have a particular path that I'm following. I have what I am doing and I have results to show. Okay. Why is it important for you to have results? I think it is the only way I can prove to myself that I'm actually doing anything. Or something. Why is it important for you to prove yourself that, that you are doing something? Because that gives me satisfaction as a person. Why is that I'm not important to you? It brings fulfillment. Why is in fulfillment life. important to you? <laughs> uh, fulfillment then means that my life has value both to myself and to others. Why is that important to you? It makes now life worth worthwhile. What does being what what does a worthwhile life mean to Eunice Muturi? <laughs> the way you keep challenging us to think of one fifty years from now. Because I feel if I continue the way I am, one fifty years from now, my village will they really have anything? that they would remember or they would talk about me. Why is it important for your village to remember you and talk about you in a positive light 150 years from today? Because I should be also be able to influence them 
by making them so, no, no, see so, what yeah so hold on hold on so any you once you once you start using the word because we've gone out of where we were we've gone back to to reasons we yeah we've and once you say the word because it opens the portal for you to draw an explanation from the environment from behavior from capacity and we are at the point of identity 150 years from today nobody knows your behavior they only know your impact and so we are not at behavior level we are not at capacity we are not even at beliefs we are at the identity of the person so why is it important to you that 150 years from today there would be an impact that you left behind okay okay the way i see it huh? it will matter because okay sorry it will matter yes no so it doesn't matter the words you say right it doesn't matter the words you say the zone you the, the zone you are in right now is the reason why that other the actual the deeper reasons are not going to emerge until we leave that zone so you're in a zone where the brain keeps jumping in the brain is like ah, we can answer this one because the brain creates explanations which is why we usually say we are in a conversation you say because and then you wait for your brain because your brain is going to find something you start saying something you're like oh oh sorry i was not i was thinking about something else because the brain is playing games uh, with, with us you you i think i think where you are the one thing that is going to unlock the next the actual portal for you is figuring out what is your driving force there's something that's driving, that drives you, that is so strong, that is making you restless. Which is why, if you go into an area and you're not succeeding in that area, right, you will move. That's that, for example, right now, network marketing, if you continue doing it and maybe five, six, eight, ten months, you're not making headway, it's possible that you will actually end up dropping it and maybe start something else. And that's because you have a driving force. You can, you you are driven, right? But if if you are driven, it's it's like if if you get a ball and you take it to the top of the the hill and just and you roll it down and there's no track for it to follow. This ball is going to go like this, right? Because the ball is driven by gravity, but it doesn't have direction. It doesn't have a path. I think for you, it's going to be a question of finding that path. Once that path is clear, once the path is clear, it will make everything else so much easier. The path is guided by what is it that is driving you? What, what is it that made, made you leave? It's, it takes a lot of courage to leave formal employment and, <laughs> and step out. So you have to see yourself as courageous. You have to see yourself as restless from the desire to make progress. Whenever you are in an environment where you don't make progress, you don't tolerate you don't tolerate environments where you are you are stuck. Except as a result of that restlessness that is not directed at a particular clear vision, you've ended up doing a little bit of being like a ball running down uh, a hill kind of going to and fro. You are up here at this time in the day, you are reflecting consistently. You are in a space where something significant is going to happen, but it's going to require that this reflection we spoke about, if you if you do it a lot more, just, just really embrace it and don't have any limits to yourself in terms of how much you can reflect. If before you show up to those clients, you're delivering products to or or you're down, down uh, line, you, the people you're recruiting, just find a way to reflect, find a way to reflect, Be, begin to become aware of what thought patterns lead you to, for example, dis, disband what you're currently doing and move on to something else. Question for you, have you, since you started doing network marketing, has there been a time when you, it, things felt so bleak you felt like walking away you're muted many times many times many times can you tell me an example when you felt like that okay mostly in the time trying to recruit uh, a member and you a downline 
Yeah, yeah. They give they have given me hopes. We have even agreed they are coming to make the payment. But somehow along the line, either they stop, especially they stop picking my calls. Yeah. They stop responding completely. Yeah. So the those are that's what we call a no. When you get a no, when you get a yes. no, it is feedback to your strategy, not feedback to you as a person. Okay. Every no is feedback to your strategy. Every time you when it's I'm I am now in medicine. If if I moved back to Kenya and opened a clinic as a cardiologist, right? Everybody walking in will be saying yes to me. Everybody not coming is saying no to me. The challenge of network marketing is that the people who need your services don't bring themselves to you. You have to find them and create demand. That's that's the challenge. And sometimes we are creating demand for something that people don't feel uh, they need as much. It is the same challenge I have with the work of the House of Mastery. The people who most need to be coached, they don't think they need to be coached. <laughs> Sometimes people come to me for coaching on public speaking, and then we figure out they actually need to do a lot of healing. They need to unclutter a lot of emo emotional baggage. And once that is done, then public speaking becomes easy, right? So that's the challenge you are facing. I do not know whether what other skills you have. Uh, this is this is my my personal view. I I did network marketing with GNLD for about eight months while working as a physician in Nairobi, right? I went into network marketing not to make money. I went to network marketing so that I can have public speaking audience. I was delivering four or five speeches every day because they were just one floor below us, right? I was I was using the audience and I was there. I was like, I'm the one in my group. I'm the one giving the motivation. I'm, I'm the one speaking. I'm like, John Maxwell says <laughs> discipline, commitment. Is, so um, I used it by the time I was working with AR Medical Center at uh, ICA Lion in town on Kenyatta Avenue, where GNLD was. <laughs> by the time I, I quit GNLD, my public speaking had gone from here to there because I, I got comfortable speaking to audiences that are bored, audiences that are excited, audiences that are noisy. Sometimes you are in that little corner, you're speaking to five or eight people and there are 10 other people speaking all over the place. I became so comfortable doing public speaking that it doesn't matter where you throw me. I'll be like, oh, okay, which, which ones, which group do you want me to speak to? Use it to develop the skills you need. Use it to develop the skills of, of communicating one-on-one. -on -one. Like, like really be intentional. Every no you get, you're getting a no from somebody who allowed you to explain the product to them. So they give you an opportunity for you to practice your communication, practice your persuasion. It's This is a time to, for example, read books about, find a really good book about persuasion and start using it. You are selling product. And that is the best training you can get anywhere in the world for wherever you want to go. Everybody on this call, if you become better at selling, your comfort zone will, will expand. If you become better at selling, become better at persuading people, communicating people. So that is my challenge to you. For now, utilize, continue doing what you're doing. Utilize uh, the environment to learn what you can. And then number two, it's it's going i'm going to leave it to you to journal and find out what is it what is it that drives you one of the things that can help you is figure out what do you hate about powerlessness or uh, what do you hate about not having money sometimes that actually brings so much clarity i know what i hate I know what I hate, and the, the day I discovered what I hate, it's it became a gift. And some of you have seen some of my goals. The goal is usually written with what I love and what I hate, because that is that's a really strong source of the energy that moves you forward. Those are the two assignments for you. 
persuasion become become the best you may not make get the money immediately but focus on becoming really really good the feedback you are getting is about your strategy improve yourself so that and improve your strategy so that you can begin to get more yeses but who knows once you discover what really drives you you might go into a different business so this is a beginning let's continue working thank you uh, Eunice so. thank you too yeah okay. I'm going to get someone else. And first of all, I want to see whether there is any question or any reflections, anything uh, of the people that are on. We have 35 people here. If there is no reflection, I'm going to find someone else. Three, two, one. Zero. Okay, so let's. I'm going to find someone that I'm trying to get. Make sure we speak to people that uh, have been on the challenge. This new challenge that we uh, haven't engaged. Faith Jerotich. Could you come on, Faith Jerotich? Let's go. Are you able to speak to be on the, the hot seat? Sorry. Good morning, Good morning. Faith. How are you doing? I'm doing well, thank you. Okay, that's great. That's mm -hmm. great. Yeah. So tell me, what are you hoping for? What would be a breakthrough for you in 2024? Uh, okay, my breakthrough or what I'm really looking forward to. Uh, but first, let me say this. Uh, when I joined this... Um, Momentum challenge, though I joined it later. Yeah, yeah. Uh, actually, what I've picked or what has assisted me much in my life, my personal life, is about uh, picking or taking the negative energy. Whenever I go, wherever I go, if somebody talks uh, badly to me, actually, I don't keep it. It comes and it goes, and that has really given me peace in my yeah. life. Yeah, and it has helped me a lot in... Uh, with with dealing with people. Uh, about my breakthrough this year is, uh, I'm actually in employment, but I'm doing my side hustle. And um, for this, what I want this year is, I want actually to have a fully functional uh, company. And that is my side hustle right now. What's I your business in? Yeah, I'm dealing with uh, uh, PPE safety products. Yes. Who are your clients for, for the products? Pardon? Who are your clients? Who do you sell to? Yeah, I sell to private companies and even public companies. Okay. In mostly logistic firms. And uh, yeah, currently most of my clients are the logistic firm, but it's part-time. Are I've you doing the business food. or are you doing the business or are you trying the business? Uh, I am, I can't say if I'm, I, I'm doing it because this is what I want to do. Faith Jerotich, are you doing the business or are you trying the business? I am doing the business. Okay. How do you know that you are doing rather than trying? Because uh, uh, this is when, because uh, this is what has been, um, it has been paying most of my bills, monthly bills. And uh, I engage a lot with it, even though I'm in employment, but I find most of my time doing it. And uh, at the beginning of this year, actually, I've gotten someone to assist me. I can, and uh, that one has made me see that I, I'm moving somewhere with it. Okay. What obstacles have you faced in the business? Uh, the obstacles that I faced is that uh, first is the financial issues. And secondly is... Um, Let's speak about that. Can you tell me what that means? 
what how is that an obstacle uh, because uh when 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 you don't have that financial muscle when you don't because most of the most of my suppliers are they can't give you credit credit facilities but you have to have the money for you to buy those products and deliver to the client okay. yeah. and uh if you if actually if you don't purchase because when when you get to the supplier they will tell you hey if you don't pay in cash i will not give you this discount i'm listening so for that that's a, a big challenge to me in finances wise and also do i move to another item it's, so l l tell tell me your perception of this business why why this why is uh, why do you think this business is going to succeed uh let me go back my field is in the, what 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 i studied or what yeah. i did at school is uh it was about procurement Procu okay yes and uh I did procurement field and I was employed in procurement up to let's say I did like three years in procurement. Yeah. Then I was moved, I was moved to another department that's finance. And in finance, that actually I was going uh that was not my part. But um my part was in procurement and I saw it like I, I've distracted my career. Because I'm not moving when I move from this company, I will not be able to get any procurement job or any finance job because in finance that's what I, I can't show in paperwork that I've done finance at school but I've took it so positive that in this finance field it has helped me a lot especially in doing my my accounting to my business actually making those cash flows the bookkeeping I, I took it positively even though it has diverted my career but it has also helped me in this business of mine did it divert your career or did it enrich your career and expand your career? Yeah, at first, yeah, I thought it has diverted my career, but I've, I took it positively that it has enriched it because it has helped me understand this other side. What is, what is your career? Procurement. Nope. Mm. What's your career? It's okay. So, what is your identity in with whatever field you choose? If I tell you my career is medicine, medicine has neurosurgery, orthopedic surgery, it has uh, gastroenterology, it has pulmonology, it has it has anesthesia, but my field is cardiology. If I tell you my, my career is cardiology, there is general cardiology, interventional cardiology, electrophysiology, all these things. If I say it's general cardiology, it can be cardi imaging cardiologist, can be in non-invasive cardiologist, invasive cardiologist. Like the label doesn't matter. At the end of the day, it's about function. Okay. And the reason I'm asking you that is you carry the same attributes across the attributes you have in whichever area, especially when you start a business, you will carry those attributes with you. Entrepreneurship is tough, but entrepreneurship is the ultimate test of who you really want to be. And I asked you about the challenges you're facing. We just specifically mentioned about uh, that that one uh, one challenge. I wanted to look at those seven questions, the seven commitments, the intentionality commitments. Okay. Mm -hmm. Look at the seven intentionality commitments. In this field where you are building the business, okay, how aware are you about your perceptions, the perceptions that are influencing what you are doing? So for example, is it absolutely true that you have to have financial muscle for you to succeed in a business to business kind of environment? Because you're essentially doing business to business because it's your business. You're not selling to individual customers. You're selling to other businesses. In other words, it's you. 
you if you are doing this business you need to actually sit down and explore what are your perceptions and attitudes about this business about the opportunities about the challenges what are your attitudes and that's why i asked you do, why do you think this business is going to succeed number 2 what do you need to learn what are the areas what you you've been doing this business for a while what are the areas that you need to learn so that you can actually have a structured way of growing in that area if you are looking at doing this business and it's paying bills then that's going to become extremely important number three change so it's applying that framework so that every single month by the end of each month you are no longer the same person that started at the beginning or the same person you are today one month from today as a result of reflecting in this business who knows, Faith? It may, maybe five, six months today, you're going to get a different idea. But because now you know procurement and you know finance, you will show up a more a, a more expanded person than if you just showed up with procurement. You are like, what? I, you, you need bookkeeping? I have no idea about bookkeeping. I think the three three ingredients in business that are extremely important, it's procurement, which you can function as a successful business person without knowing, but definitely you have to know finance and you have to know sales. So sales and finance. So if I was to disrupt your career, after you've, you've done procurement, you've done finance, I would take you to sales for the next three years. So that at the end of those three, those nine years, now you are rounded in each of these areas. Your career is not procurement. You are, function, you are serving a function there, right? And that's why you've been able to succeed in this other area as a person. What do you feel has been your strongest advantage in, in doing this business? You're doing the side hustle you're doing. What has been your biggest weakness? Come up again. What has been your biggest advantage or biggest strength? What has been your biggest weakness? Uh, for this, my biggest advantage is that uh, when I am in this, uh, when I am employed, I take advantage of the of our clients at work. I get to talk to them, see if I can supply to them, because most of my clients, I got them through my employment. So while we do business with them in my employment field, they've we've actually created this this other relationship that uh, they've helped me a lot in my business building and uh, so so the, the the environment is giving you opportunities but you it's you you are interested that's why you're able to create those opportunities people can have the access to those clients how many of us have access to clients but we don't speak to them about what we are offering okay I, I I hear that part. What has been what is your biggest weakness specifically in terms of this business? Uh, my biggest weakness is um, commitment and sometimes fear. You fear. I fear maybe if I go to this client, I might not have the right word, words or the right uh, marketing terms to convince this client to to partner with me or to make me one of their suppliers. And uh, I think what I've been struggling, because what I want is uh, I want to, to, to be able to maybe import some of these products to enable me actually have this network or to enable me market well this company. So that has been, I've been struggling with that a lot. I don't know where to start. I think that's that opens up uh, um, a very big conversation we can't finish right now. Uh, so he, here is my perception, and I would speak to you if, if I was coaching you directly, right? If I was speaking with you uh, directly, that you, this is a business you are taking, uh, you are doing because of the opportunity that was presented, that it became possible for you to do it because the environment supports it. I wonder whether you would still be able to do it if the environment did not provide you that opportunity. 
but for now in my view is look through all the seven ingredients on the intentionality commitments right mm -hmm. and become aware about that first part is extremely important what you have just spoken about is a perception it's the perception you have about uh it's everything 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 that we have in the world right now is is a story everything 100% is a story kenya is a story there is no physical kenya it's a story <laughs> right Safaricom, there's a day it was a story. The breakthrough challenge is a story. It's there's no physical breakthrough challenge, but it feels it feels real to the point where I'm like, everybody needs to reflect, right? It is a story. The business you are doing is a story. A story can be written in a different way. But a story can only be written in a different way once awareness changes. I don't know whether faith if you if if you're getting that if you the level of awareness your awareness changes the story that you are telling will change you you are doing this business but you're not yet doing it it's, i hope that it's i'm not accusing you i'm just telling you my perception is that you you're doing the business you you're doing the business right you're doing it you are not doing it and that attitude of doing it is going to require you to raise your awareness become aware about your perceptions figure out the areas that you actually need to learn there are a couple of things you probably need to learn maybe there are some new products that other people are not thinking about that you can actually start supplying and and dominate right and then change it's figure out what areas of your approach can you change perhaps how you communicate perhaps i don't know you will figure that out the actions you take the and then reflecting it's just find a way to apply this model specifically to that business and commit to writing like responding to each of this and and do that for at least 14 days Every single day you sit down for 15, 20 minutes, you actually look at the business and respond to each of these ingredients. I promise you, I promise you, in two weeks from today, you will speak and view the business very, very, very differently. And you never know what kind of doors that would open up. And most importantly, it's that awareness can be carried on to something else, anywhere, anytime. All right, Faith, thank you. I'll <laughs> let you off the, the hot seat. Uh, let's speak with someone else for the remaining minutes and then uh, we'll wrap up. It, this thing keeps changing the order. It's, I'm going to get a, get maybe two or three responses, then we, we, we get somebody else because sometimes I put it at the very end and then we don't have uh, time. Uh, it'll just call, uh, because this is about business, I'm going to call Sylvia, because she's a witness, and then I'll call someone else. What's, what, what's uh, your reflection? Because we've spoken to people uh, like Eunice and uh, Faith. For some reason, it's ended up being uh, elements about business. So let's let's go, Sylvia. I'm not going, even going to guide you. Just give us a, cup, a very short reflection, and then we get someone else. Um, I think the questions that were coming to my mind as you were speaking to um, the different people on the hot seat was um, what are my perceptions about the challenges that I go through personally um, within the business that I'm in? And that's something that I thought to myself, oh, that's, that's something I should think about. And when... I encounter something that I might perceive as a dis distraction. I might want to think about it as, is it really a distraction or is it enriching the process? Like in the case of- um, Faith. Uh, I, I miss, yeah, faith, faith. Is is her access to finance now a distraction or is it really enriching uh, her experience, her career and 
probably her business prospects. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much, Sylvia. That's a uh... That's an important reflection, particularly for someone like you who is in uh, business, because perceptions are contagious. That's something for you to remember. Perceptions are contagious. Your customers speak your perceptions. You, you don't need to tell them. They will pick your perceptions. You, your perceptions show up subconsciously in your environment. Let's get someone else's reflection and then we can move on. I'm going to just find someone. Nyathiwa Fanis. Fanis Nyathiwa Omondi. Let's go. Um, my reflection as you went through the uh, intentionality commitments, I, I felt like one marries into the other. When you're aware, you learn. When you learn, you can accept change. When you accept change, you can make actions where needed, you know, and take actions where needed. And when you take actions, you become resilient on whatever output, on what, you know, like they say, actions have consequences. So whatever action you take and you get the consequence, you'll be resilient to the to the to the to the action that you've taken and 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 then you'll be able to sit back and reflect on where you want to be, what you did well, and what you can do better, and be accountable to you, your peers and to your coaches and to you know everyone. That's 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 what actually um, I can reflect about today's yeah today's yeah. session. Yeah, thank you, thank you, thank you so much, uh, Fanny's. So what what you've said is uh, is very true. I what what just to to recap. So what uh, Fanny spoke about is that. It, it's there is that direction where action leads to downstream consequences, right? That is one way of looking at this. I need you to actually prioritize the opposite where even before you take action, you have developed awareness. Before you start the job, before you approach the client, before you start the business, before you make the change before you make a new acquisition you have already reflected what are my thoughts what are my perceptions about what is about to happen right when it comes to learning it's a question of what do i need to learn so that by the time i make this decision by the time i speak to this client i am better prepared right what do i need to change now the question of change presumes that you already have awareness from what you've done before. In other words, how differently can I show up? In a, how, how can I change how I show up so that I can show up differently? So it has two sides. It has the response or the, the consequence end where something has happened, therefore you become aware, right? Something happens, you, you learn. Something happens, you, but there is the side of doing it before. Setting up accountability systems before. Committing to before you have to need it. Partnering with someone who is going to be available for you before you need them so that you do not end up sleeping off. It, this, is, this, is a, this is a crucial, they are called intentionality commitments because they are a component of intentionality. You intentionally decide what you will do to raise your awareness. You intentionally decide what you will do to enhance your learning so that your learning precedes what you are going to do. Remember, there is a reflection at the very end. The reflection allows you to think about all these things at all levels, but it ensures that even after the, it's done, you are still able to capture the lessons you need to capture. So I just wanted to make sure that you recognize the, the two parts. The ordinary way is something happens, then we learn from it. The intentional way is that we learn about something before we engage it. So that after we engage it, then it's we have additional feedback so that the next time we are going to, to, to redo it, we know what we need to learn in between. So intentionality precedes action. Intentionality, you establish the outcome before the outcome manifests. That is the power of intentionality you cast it's you forecast what's going to happen by the level of intentionality you have 
Uh, Gladys Nyabura Muhunyo has her hand up. Gladys, I'm going to kindly ask you proceed. I know that you are on the road. Thank you, Dr. Tari. Good evening and good morning, the, my fellow Kenyans. I just wanted to share an item that was on the hot seat that you asked, are you trying to do something or are you really doing it? And how I approach it on my side is that I have stopped putting things on my entry that I will try to do. I only put yeah. things on my entry that I will do. And how I go about it is, before I write it down, I say, if something comes up, will I have an excuse not to do this task? Oh. Will I look for an excuse not to do this task? And if I can get an excuse not to do it, I don't put it on my entry because excuses will come up. If I put it on my entry, if yeah. something else comes up, will I do it no matter what? Will I have no excuse at all? So my my entry is, is there excuse not to do it or is there no excuse? That means rain will come and I've driven all the way in the rain in Nairobi. It will become cold. It will become hot. Will I still do what I said I'm going to do? So knowing what I'm doing or what I'm trying is will you be able to do it without an excuse or will you look for any excuse not to do it? That's how I approach it. Thank you. That is beautiful. That is really, really, really beautiful because that goes, Gladys, thank you very much. You just went straight to the commitment to action. So the commitment to action is not committing to action after it has happened. You commit to action before. And so you have really, you have added a layer that uh, hopefully has clarified this to everyone. So you've spoken about commitment to action. You've spoken about commitment to resilience. In other words, you know that you are going to face obstacles, but you decide in advance that the commitment, the action is going to happen and the obstacles are going to be navigated. And it's not surprising that the obstacles show up. You decide in advance that the obstacles are going to show up, but they are going to find you ready. They find you ready, you are able to navigate them, and you still take the action that you need to do. So this piece is probably the single most important addition to whatever vision that you are working on. The vision calls you to learn. It calls you to change. It calls you to take action. It calls you to be resilient. It calls you to reflect so that the experiences you are having can become insight. It calls you to accountability. But all these things are preceded by the vision calling you to awareness. What are your beliefs? What are your perceptions? What are your, uh, your biases and prejudices about whatever you're, you're trying to do? Sometimes you're trying to sell uh, to, to someone and then they, they are from that community or they, they are from that country or they went to that school or they speak with that accent. And you don't realize that you have that prejudice and that prejudice somehow, when you are speaking to this person, your tone kind of goes slightly differently than when you are speaking to this other person. I have ever worked with salespeople who are seated you know, in, in a room making calls and somebody starts speaking with a, a really high tone and then suddenly their tone lowers and they probably are not even aware about it. So reiterating awareness, awareness as an active choice you make. These are intentionality commitments. You, com you commit to awareness, commit to investigate your own perceptions, your own mindset about what is going on, your own explanations, your own excuses. And if you forget everything that I've said about this, just remember the contribution that Gladys has given, just given us. That brings us to 7.30. I want to see whether there's any specific contributions. My encouragement is uh, that uh, we, I dedicated this session. Okay, Fannies, I'm coming to you in a second. I dedicated this session for us to actually have um, an extended conversation. Please check in with each other and you, you can utilize that space to, uh, you can utilize that space tomorrow to, to to converse but most importantly reflect on the timeline reflect on the timeline i want to see whether there they are any any questions before we close eunice did you have a question 
I see you. Requested if you could, I could had requested if you could repeat the levels of the goal. Something you mentioned about change of identity behavior to manifest. I missed that. So the um, that is a, that piece is uh, going to come in its entirety. But these are there. It's just six levels. They are called the six levels, the, the logical levels. The at the it's six circles, six concentric circles. The outermost is environment, followed by behavior, followed by capacity, followed by beliefs. Followed by identity. And then at the center is purpose or why or source or meaning. Whatever you want to, to call it. Those are the six. If you get lost in Nairobi, you can explain it based on any of these levels. You can explain it and say in Nairobi city is very confusing. So you are using the environment to explain it. Or you can say... I did not ask for direction. So you're using behavior to explain it. Or you can say, I don't do it. I don't, I don't like cities. I don't, I, I can't live in a big city. So you're using capacity. Or you can use beliefs to say, cities are so confusing. Nairobi, Nairobi is such a, such a crazy city. You're using your belief. Or you can use identity to say, I always get lost. Me and cities, mm -mm. right? The level of using the why is, is, is much deeper. We generally don't use it. So those levels, you can use everything. Every single time I'm coaching people, I listen to this and I'm like, I'm searching. So where are they starting from, right? And anytime I hear somebody starting from environment, I'm like, my work is cut out. <laughs> we have a long way to go from environment to behavior, to capacity, to beliefs, to identity, even before we go to, to the inner core. If you have watched the hot seat, it, and I would like you to be curious in subsequent sessions, people always move really quickly from environment to behavior, to capacity, to beliefs. And then... If they go to identity, the brain keeps jumping. I think, I believe, I imagine, I expect. That is the brain jumping back, trying to reach to one of the other more comfortable layers, right? It's That's because now you're trying to break from beliefs to identity or identity to purpose. But that cannot come from your head. It has to come from your heart. You have to switch the source. But the brain doesn't want to let go. So the brain keeps trying to search. So those are the six layers. And that model is powerful. I use that model on thinking through things on my own, speaking to my patients. If, if, if a patient who is trying to lose weight comes in and tells me that the supermarkets are so far from where I live, we are dealing with environment. So <laughs> it's, it's, it's going to be a long way from environment to identity. Where, where we need to figure out what is it about you that makes you eat these kinds of food or, or make the decisions you make, right? So having that model just, it's every single time, every, every single time. My sister is not here, but I know what level she mostly operates in. And I can't wait to see what happens in her life because I've, I've seen how much progress she's made in such a time most many of you especially those of you who submit your evaluations for the meetings i can i can tell you like this is where you're mostly operating from and most of you most of you are at least at the level of capacity or the level of beliefs it's most most people who are, so it's from the momentum challenge and from the people in the larger group right with whom i had conversations who didn't end up joining <laughs> this challenge from the moment we start ch chatting, I can tell that this person is going to join. This person is not going to join. I just need to place them. If their conversation is starting from environment, right? If if my my kids 
have to go to school if they are using something else to explain i'm like ah we've already lost this battle and i don't necessarily i follow up one or two times but that's it right if i'm following up with you about doing your assignments and it's 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 the level of environment i probably would end up giving up that would be it this was meant to be a conversation and i hope 